All right, welcome to the College Station High School AP Physics C video series. We're going to get straight into it with Unit 2 on 3D motion. So recall from Unit 1, when we were talking about 1D motion, that we had the path for our particle as a function of time in terms of its initial position, an initial velocity, v naught, and an acceleration. Well, in three dimensions, the good news is that we just get three functions, one in each direction, and all of them are independent of one another. And so when we add the vectors for the position, velocity, and acceleration, we just get three equations, one for x, one for y, and one for t. So recall also that the velocity for one dimension was just the derivative of the scalar x. So here the velocity vector is going to be the time derivative of the position vector. So I'm going to write that r dot. So this is notation for time derivative. And in terms of the components we get the derivative of x in the x direction derivative of y in the y direction and the derivative of z in the z direction. And these unit vectors are all constant. They're the same everywhere in space. They don't change with time. So we don't have to worry about their derivatives at all. So we can write that the x component of the velocity is the derivative of the x equation and then for y time derivative and z. Pretty simple. Now for acceleration using the same analog our acceleration in one dimension is the second derivative of the position so, in three dimensions, the acceleration vector is the second derivative of the position. So I get the acceleration is equal to x double dot of t x hat plus y double dot y hat plus z double dot z hat. So now we can find the velocity and acceleration given the position and we can work backwards too if we need to. So where we had the scalar equation for the position in one dimension that we started with in three dimensions for an object undergoing constant acceleration instead we get some initial position vector, an initial velocity vector, and this constant acceleration. So these are just initial vectors, they're not functions of time, so that's fine, and our acceleration is constant, so by definition it's not a function of time. So with that in mind, we can start solving problems. Let me pull one up. I think I want to do 413 in your textbook, just as an example. It gives me the position vector r as a function of time as 2t cubed minus 5t x hat and then 6 minus 7 t to the fourth y hat and it wants to know the position velocity and acceleration at time equals two seconds and then an angle so let's handle ABC first for the values a is just the value of r at two seconds so look this up in the text if you want to follow along 
and so all I have to do is plug in 2 for t. So I get 2 times 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 5 times 2, plus 6 minus 7 times 2 to the 4th, 16. And that gives me the position, easy enough. Alright, moving on to the velocity. We don't have the velocity vector yet, but we have the position, so we can just take the derivative. So this would be the derivative of the x component. And it just applies to the two components separately. Just like it did before when we were taking the derivative of the position vector. And so this is just the derivative of a polynomial. Uh, we all know what the derivative rules are for polynomials. It's really the simplest case. The time or the derivative with respect to the variable of t to the n is just n t to the n minus one. So let's use that rule. We get two t cubed. So two n is three t to the n minus 1 is 2 minus 5 so t has rank 1 here so we get 5 times 1 t to the 0 which is just 1 and so we get 6 t squared minus 5 x hat and now let's do the y the derivative of a constant is 0 so I get minus 7 times 4 t, 4 minus 1 is 3. So I get negative 28 t cubed y hat. Okay. But the question asks me what the value of v is at 2. So this will be, let's see if I can remember, 6, 2 squared minus 5 x hat plus uh, negative 28 times t cubed y hat. So whatever these numbers are, you get like a, this will be useful later, so we're going to have to calculate it anyway. 6 times 4 is 24, minus 5 is 19, and then 28 times 8. is 224 I cheated, I used a calculator alright, so we'll save that C wants the acceleration it's the derivative of the velocity a vector so we have that here, remember this is t squared and this is t cubed and so we get 6 times 2 is 12 t 2 minus 1 is 1 derivative of constant is 0 so that's our x plus negative 28 times 3 times t squared y and so our a of 2 is 24x plus uh, negative 28 times 3 times 4y whatever that number is okay I'm going to keep this because we're using it for the next part part D wants to know what is the angle between the positive direction of the x-axis and a line tangent to the particle's path at t equals zero? So we want 
a line tangent to the path r of t at t equals 2 seconds. Well, the vector tangent to r of t is just its derivative, and we already know what its derivative is. It's the velocity. So the vector tangent to r of t at t equals 2 seconds is going to be the velocity at t equals 2 seconds. So we have this vector v of 2 equals 19x minus 224y. This is tangent to r of t at t equals 2 seconds. So all we need to do is find the angle of this vector with respect to the positive x-axis, and we have our solution. So, a little note on finding the angles of vectors. The first thing is that I like to write arctan of x rather than this, which is probably what you see on your calculator, because to me this looks like 1 over tangent of x and not the inverse tangent of x. So this is uh, pretty clear when you're just like speed reading your notes or something. And the second is that the calculator doesn't deal very well with the sign of the argument. So this is what I mean by that. For example, if I have arctangent of negative 1, so the argument is negative, I could either have the x negative and the y positive, so my vector is somewhere here in the second quadrant, or I could have my vector be somewhere here in the fourth quadrant where the x is positive and the y is negative, and the calculator doesn't know the difference, and so this is ambiguous. The same trouble is had if we have a positive arctangent, so let me see. It, it, it can mistake it for somewhere in the first quadrant or somewhere in the third quadrant because this would be a negative number divided by a negative number which would result in a positive argument. So what you want to do when finding an angle is the first step is to find the reference, what's called the reference angle, so new vocab. You might have already seen this in pre-cal, but I know some of the in-person students had never seen this before, and so I thought it might be useful to go over in the video. We're going to call the reference angle alpha, and alpha is just the arctangent of the positive components. So normally you divide y over x, and so to denote that these components are strictly positive, I'm putting the absolute value sign on y and x. And then you have to do some reasoning about where your vector is in your coordinate system. If x, x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, then you're somewhere here in the first quadrant. x less than 0, y greater than 0 puts you in the second quadrant. So we got 1, 2. If they're both less than 0, you're over here in 3. And if x is positive and y is negative, you're in 4. So that's pretty intuitive as to just where to put it. Just think about where your vector is in the coordinate axis. And then your reference angle, alpha, is always going to be this angle between wherever your vector is in that quadrant in the x-axis, not necessarily the positive x-axis. So it's always this interior angle here. So in quadrant 1, your angle theta that you're actually after is just equal to the reference angle. In 2,
you travel pi less alpha. So you go 180 degrees, but then have to subtract alpha. So theta is pi minus alpha. And 3, similarly to 2, you travel 180, so pi, and then add alpha. So this is pi plus alpha. And then in quadrant 4, theta is 2 pi, so the whole circle, less alpha. So 2 pi minus alpha. So find first step, find your reference angle using only the positive components, y and x. And then step 2, uh, use the formula for the correct quadrant. Uh, to give you theta. Yay. And uh, that will never betray you. That will always give you the correct answer as long as you follow those rules. So to get back to what we were doing, V of 2 was 19x minus 224y so my y is negative and my x is positive so I'm somewhere over here in quadrant 4 my reference angle is the arctangent of the positive y divided by the positive x so 224 over 19 and that means that the angle of the vector that's tangent to the particle's path is our rule for quadrant 4, 2 pi minus arc 10, 224 over 19. So it's going to be like slightly greater than 3 pi over 2. So a little bit more than 270 degrees. Alright, see you next time.